that I'm going to be talking about and posting later is Matt's, what, how is it pronounced? Paralandra? Paralandra? Yes, I believe so. Cool. But yeah, this was the date on the copyright was 2020. Uh, a little bit about Matt as I'm presenting it to him. And Ben's here. Hey, dude. But Matt, hey. what's up? Dude? How's it going? It's going all right. Hey, Ben. Hello, Rebecca. How are you? I'm well. How are you? I'm all right. Yeah, ben, I don't know if you've met Matt before. But hey. Hello, Matt. Hello, Ben. Oh, As I'm awkwardly presenting on him, uh, he is the corn faculty at Mississippi State. I've seen a lot of your performing books. artists, and uh, he wrote a really cool fundamental book called Dueling Fundamentals. I've been working through a bit. Oh, uh, awesome! Some of some of them are really good to work with some younger students. Some of them are hard as nails. <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> it's uh, yeah. I'll check it out. It's really neat, but. Matt and I met uh, last summer at the International Fellowship of Conductors, Composers, and Collaborators, where we were two of the four-person horn section doing a week of recordings and stuff on chamber music, some commonly played, some not. Right on. So to know each other and where I also got interest for his piece, Carol Andrew. Cool. Uh, five minutes long for horn alone. Uh, the range is really pretty approachable for younger students in particular. It's from the G below the staff to the G on top. So really pretty, pretty reserved and really nice to approach. Uh, it's based on the second book of C.S. Lewis's The Space Trilogy. The book itself talks about the landscape of uh, Venus and all that, which science today has proven that it isn't as true as C.S. Lewis would have thought. But uh, the horn takes the opportunity to depict the storyline of planetary landscape. Uh, this is based on the half diminished seventh chord into the harmonic series of the fifth, sixth, seventh, and ninth partials. And there are some really cool features with improv on uh, open partials, natural horn, stop, wow. control, what was, oh, sorry, and valve and lip trails. Uh, real quick here, uh, just a, about just a minute of this so you guys could get a taste of this. Uh, I'm just trying to pick segments so we aren't burdened down with listening to every single piece of everything, but. Just about 90 seconds in. Let me know if this doesn't come through. It should. <laughs> Cool. So what gets me excited about this piece, other than being friends with the guy that wrote it, is it's it's such a pedagogically sound piece to me. It does so many things that were that are beat into our head through fundamentals, etudes, just everything but it gives it a practical use with a really cool piece of music it's five minutes it's easy to plug into a recital where it isn't gonna eat up a majority of your 45 minute time slot and i mean you could have a student play it on a sophomore recital uh, some of the potential challenges that i thought were in this i mean it's things that i struggle with all the time too are like lip trills in general uh tremolo general flexibility and to me, the build up with the stopped horn to the open, where it's a crescendo, where when you open it up, like when I was just playing through it, it's surprisingly tricky to not overpower, where it's like, you're like crescendo, 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 and then even louder. But those are just things that are potential pitfalls for some students, or if you choose to perform it yourself. But pedagogical value to this piece, as I said before, very approachable piece for intermediate students, and honestly, like upper classmen as well, that are looking for something not to bust their face. Uh, great application to improve flexibility actually makes all those lip slurs and everything we do have that performance. Yeah. Uh, this gets us used to performing programmatic works. In Horn World with the themes of Mozart and Strauss that keep coming back, it, we don't get to do a whole lot of the programmatic stuff. 
And also we get to pra practice technical lines without them being particularly difficult. Uh, I feel like a lot of younger horn players are afraid to move their fingers. And uh, this piece with the technical aspects of it, it isn't ridiculous. Uh, and it's a great place for a student to get over that fear. But here I can also show some of the PDF of this. Okay. Yeah, so like right up here, an example of the, uh, just the harmonic series, the flexibility. Here's where I was talking about the stop to open kind of a thing when I was messing around. Just the going from pianissimo to fortissimo and not being overpowering when I come to open horn. But improv based on the just the open harmonic series is really cool. And also Matt's super particular with uh, the fingerings he chooses. The open on the F horn, two and one. Like I was thinking about this and I didn't have an answer. Matt, you, I assume you will. Are you wanting it to kind of sit how it does in the harmonic series without adjusting as much to some of the pitch? Well, I think in, in this spot, yeah, I mean, overall, yes, because that'll give it that kind of other words, worldly sound that yeah. has that out of tune seventh partial. But for this section, um, I think it gives it kind of a wild, um, raucous kind of nature at this tempo to have like the seventh partial in the third measure with the A flat. And, and it kind of also with forcing the airspeed, it kind of does give it that kind of, kind of wild sound instead of more refined it kind of makes it pop out in a different way well so yeah it's a super neat piece i mean it's two pages it's pretty i didn't work on it obviously a lot i just kind of messed through it to see like what i came across and i mean i feel like this is a fantastic piece to use particularly with teaching and in like academia and i mean when you're trying to introduce students to things it's super cool but some of the, then finally, the last thing on this piece that I talk about is where to purchase and listen to it. IHS's website, their music sales. There's a, a direct link to this as well, uh, like to the recording uh, right on the site. And it's $4, get the PDF downloaded right to you. And also, just so you guys know, I'll, I could send you guys a PDF that I took where just direct hyperlinks to each of these pieces, recordings, and where to buy it. So. Don't need to worry about that. But, all right, the next piece is another unaccompanied piece. Uh, the pronunciation's fun. Okukuula kwa eke and don diri. I'm just gonna call it horn call because that's what a lot of the people typically call it. Uh, by Justinian Tamusosa. Uh, this is a really neat piece. Uh, he is a Ugandan composer. He traditionally blends classical Western and Ugandan traditional, uses a lot of polyrhythms and pentatonic scales, uh, relies on imitation of Ugandan instruments. For, so this piece in particular kind of models after percussion, which is really neat. And he's taught at the, the university there in Uganda and Northwestern. But this piece is another five minute unaccompanied piece. Uh, let me double check that range. It's not super long or super diverse, which is pretty nice. Uh, it goes from uh, F3, so just F at the bottom of the staff up to high B flat. Uh, this is a, as he says, an expanded version of the unaccompanied horn call that serves as the introduction to an ensemble piece scored for horn, string quartet, and maracas. Um, as you can see here, no translation for the ekondere, but the other one means a calling or reaching to someone who's far away and cannot be seen, which is usually why people just call this horn call. Uh, it does use quarter tones that are notated. I'll show you guys the PDF of that. And they give either half stopped or uh, recommended fingerings to get them to speak. The extra extended techniques are by removing slides and playing the harmonics outside of the slide, out or through the slide, or tapping rhythms on the mute. Uh, potential challenges, quarter tones, the rhythm's kind of cool, tapping the mute and harmonics with outsides and lip trills. But here's a little bit of a recording of this. <laughs>
as you're able to see there on some of that, the notations are opening up. Uh, the first page shows more of the fingerings recommended, which is pretty cool. Um, once it actually goes to removing the slides, here, uh, remove second slide and first slide, first second slide on the F side, first slide on the B flat. For the remainder of the piece, technically it's in horn and E, but it's basically do and go. Uh, <laughs> this works for crusty horns. Uh, Geyer, it the recommend the recommendation here does not. Uh, in the program notes, it specifies that experiment try to make it just so the harmonics work. So that's something. If this is an interest to you, like I know that Ben and Rebecca both play Geyer raps, it might just be something. If this is a piece of interest to you, but just really neat stuff there. It's all really approachable. Then you put the mutes obviously in there and then you drum on the mute just like the rhythms and then simultaneously with playing. This was so hard to me to sit there and with my right hand tap the rhythm that I'm playing. It just it messed with my head and huh. all, the composer recommends using an egg shaker instead of your finger. It gives it that, it gives it a timbre there. Let me see if I can just fast forward that. That's the part that messed with my head a bit. <laughs> yeah, so that's, it's a really, really cool piece. Um, so some of the pedagogical values I thought of this, I mean, we don't get to play a whole lot of world, music, but I mean, and also we don't get to do quarter times. It's a really neat kind of a thing. Um, I mean, playing a groove and once again, the lip trills keep coming back. But yeah, you could buy this at a bunch of different websites, Hickey's, Pope, June Emerson, Wind Music, and it sells for about 23 bucks. And this is a hard copy as well. So it's not something you could download directly. And the only place I found a recording of this was James Wilden's Horn World blog which was the website that I used there for you from back from June 30th, 2010. And he has a really cool write up on it as well. So it's really just all there. All right, now we're gonna get to Horn of the Piano. Uh, Evening Reveries by Osama Mustafa. He's a freelance performer, teacher and composer. He was living in St. Louis. I think he just moved to Atlanta, if I'm not mistaken but he's taught and written for various drum corps. And he also owns Elliott Custom Horns, which is the first in, as far as I'm, I know, only black owned custom horn company, which is pretty neat. Hi, Ashley. <laughs> he wrote this piece for his mother. It features the heroic movie horn sound and it kind of fits the low horn feature as well. Let's do a quick listen to that. Just cross out some of these. <laughs>
Beat piece. It's like, uh, has anybody heard that piece before? No. It's, it's really neat. And honestly, I kind of found it when I was just going through Steve Park's YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. Just going through different solo pieces just to try to hear something new. And it's so cool. Yeah, I really think it's just about as good as any new piece I've ever heard. I mean, it's a fantastic piece of music. I mean, 100%. Like, I mean, it's a five and a half minutes long. The range is pretty big. It goes from like that first space A flat up to the high B flat. So it is pretty expansive, but in the same breath, it's not taxing at all. And it's so easy to get excited about just a piece that's written with a gorgeous sound for a gorgeous instrument. Like, it's so cool. It's, Steve Park it, sounds so, so good. He, he does. Yeah. Oh, my gosh, down there. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so, I mean, some of the tougher parts about this are just the typical range. I mean, low range isn't completely friendly to a lot of students in particular, but I, in the same, same vein, I think this is a great pedagogical piece. It's something that's entertaining to people that's new, still feels like, old horn but in his piece too he has a lot of soft dynamics like super softs toward the end um well i mean this for instance this singing passage at pianissimo that's tough when students see that they want to play too soft or these like down to triple p like that's just the soft dynamics kind of scared me a little bit for just someone checking it out uh, the rhythmic syncopation is a little bit uncomfortable to some students. Um, solidifying the tempo changes. He's super particular on his tempi. And some of them are only off by six to eight clicks. So, I mean, just the horn player alone feeling that's tough, the piano player on there and feeling that's tough, and then putting it together is even tougher with that, having the adjustment period. And just like Matt's piece, the stop to open transition was something I thought was interesting. <laughs> but yeah, builds that horn sound, which as Bill Slocum used to say, uh, works on range and leaps, dynamic control, and really works on telling a story. If you want to buy this, you just email Usama directly via, well, contact him via email. It's 25 bucks. It came with the horn part score, the audio file to the piano, so you can just play with it, and a sample page of one of his other pieces that you can check out. Uh, in the PDF I have, if you guys would like there too, I have his email directly there. So if it's something you're interested in and listening to it, obviously on Steve Park's channel. All right. This, this piece is so cool. Uh, illustrations on poems by Attila Hosef. It was written in 2017 by Roland Van Pauli. I assume no one's heard of this one at all. Okay, it's, it's wild. This is, I mean, it's all, this is the cover of the piece. It's just really, really neat. That's all I can see. But uh, Roland is a Hungarian tuba composer and arranger. He's primarily a tuba player, writes every once in a while. Uh, principal tuba for the Hungarian National Phil. He's won a lot of tuba competitions, writes primarily for tuba, but there's two works for horn. This one and an unaccompanied one that I think is a little newer than this one. Uh, I'm not sure if he teaches in Hungary, but he actually was a visiting teacher at Indiana Bloomington for a little bit. It's pretty neat. But... Uh, yeah, so this is based on three poems by Attila Joseph, uh, A Worker's Death, My Little Lady, and A Minute. And the piano and horn are equal partners. So uh, I'm going to just play a little of the third movement. It's really cool. I just want to get to the third movement so it's easier to see what's neat about it.
I'll get to this in a little bit, but what's cool about this website where this is where I recommend that you actually buy it from. I think this is the most inexpensive, but uh, instead of it's just being sample recordings, it's actually the entire piece, which is pretty cool. But yeah, so instead of doing notes on the movements, I actually put the poems because they're kind of creepy. Uh, the machine caught him, his blood splashed far away, his head falling to the ground in white. It will now have a place among the worms. And he was laid out on the cool stone of the yard. The night of the two hands of a worker became eternal. He looked enviously at many sad, pale faces. In his hands, the fight continued to burn. The many children's mouths were waiting for the little bread. The noise of the thing stops for a minute. A man's tear, tearful sigh subsides. He wakes up on the bed of two hungry children. The machine starts rattling again, and everything goes as if nothing had happened. There are still enough people left on the ground. Which, I mean, this is obviously just a translation from the Hungarian, but it's so dark. Because, I mean, it, it, it applies kind of during the depression of when this was written in like the 20s and stuff, but it awkwardly applies today, which is kind of fun. Um, the second movement there, it's, this is definitely the lyrical movement. Uh, my little lady, do not cry. Great, we are one of us. You will remain with me in infinity. The song is me, and I sang about you. And the final movement, uh, the army of birds sings that the forest resounds, smeared peasant and all toward the river. The sun also shines warmly. It ignites the leg, not even seeing the sky, tiny narrow sky. The peasant child heats up. He falls down on the river bank. He rolls on the sand. He will take gravel, a good flat one, throw it in the river now. He will be whistling away. So essentially a kid playing in the river or the woods. So it's three very different things. But I forgot to mention this piece is about seven minutes total for these three movements. So it's not particularly long. Uh, the range, this is probably the biggest range of all five pieces. It goes from the F below the bass clef staff up to high B, which we saw the rip up to the high B there. Um, but yeah, potential challenges, flutter tongue, especially in the low register. That low F I specified about uh, actually is flutter tongue. So it's, it's really hard to keep that air going and it sounds like a motorcycle, but <laughs> uh, very low stop notes, hand glissandi, hearing the harmonies because it gets a little wonky, the technical passage we just saw, the one over one octave rip we just saw, it was what, an octave and a tritone. Uh, it's just junked with the piano and just planning your breath. It's kind of obscene. So. Yeah, so some of the example of the low stuff down here, the flutter tongue with all that just kind of falling. But I mean, overall, it's not a ridiculous piece, not like ridiculously hard. This is definitely a challenging work, especially what we have a stopped low G. There's some things that I wouldn't have recommended, but you can, can't expect anyone to abide by that. Uh, some of the, despite it looking technical, this is just a very lyrical movement. But yeah, and we went through a majority there of the final movement. Uh, I do feel that this piece has a lot of pedagogical value. Um, it's still programmatic, and I believe this could, even though it's European, I think this could be considered world music because it doesn't necessarily fit a lot of what we do. Building technical facility, flutter tongue, stopped horn, muted horn with some of the intonation when it's thin, the singing quality, and the low, low bass clef. Uh, you can buy it at a number of sites, editions, BIM, Hickey's, Theodore Front Music Literature. It goes for about $23, and Editions BIM is where they got the recordings for you. I'm just going to try to get through this last one so we can keep it moving. Uh, has anybody played anything from Kathy at all yet? Her stuff is so cool. But uh, this is Vivid Dreams. It's a three movement work, but I'll get to that. She's an Australian based composer, studied jazz piano. She's been writing for a lot of horn players lately. I think she's up to 12 pieces uh, for horn. Denise Tryon's done this one. Uh, Adam Unsworth did Snapshots. Uh, Andy Pelletier's done one with her. Uh, but she has other pieces, Snapshots, Horn and Piano. Uh, I Threw Shoe at a Cat is a nice unaccompanied work. Uh, Bad Neighbors is for two horn soloists and either horn quartet or piano. 
And then if you're looking for something to actually pair with like the Brahms trio, Out of the Woods is a really cool about 13 minute work that is same instrumentation or you can get a version for flute instead of violin, but it's complete contrast. Um, so Vivid Dreams was commissioned by Denise Tryon and premiered at IHS 50. I believe this was a part of her uh, low horn project. But so it is a low horn feature and it highlights the storytelling capabilities of the horn. We'll end up listening to a little of the third movement, so I'll talk about, well, actually. <laughs> so the first movement is called, where is it? Sorry. Keep getting our pictures in the way. Okay, the first movement is called Cradle in the Forest. It opens up with that nice prologue. It's a pretty much solo horn all the way until you get to the solid tempo there. The way that she describes this is as a twisted lullaby that takes a few wrong turns. Uh, but it's definitely a low horn work. Gets to have some technical facility, but it's really pretty approachable. The overall range of this piece is only from G at the bottom of the bass clef staff to high A. But it's pretty neat. Uh, nothing too particularly challenging other than just the low range technical work. Uh, the next movement is Octopus, and it's her image of just the life of an octopus. And it has a nice little eight note enigmatic line here that keeps repeating and everything. Uh, yeah, some of the low range flutter tongue, and then it kind of, it keeps fading back to nothing, to air fault flowing through the horn to kind of symbolize the uh, octopus crawling back into its crevice. Here's the third movement. I'm actually just going to play it on the video because it has the sheet music directly on the video. Sorry, I was listening to it a little earlier. <laughs> done piece. I think it needs to get performed more than it is. Uh, this piece was also written for horn and wind ensemble. She, they later wrote it instead of the piano part, which is cool, but it's really hard to perform because you can barely hear the horn because of the range that it's in for a lot of the time. It doesn't, it just doesn't cut. But some of the challenges for this, stopped horn, half stop, the rhythmic syncopation, jazz in general, low flutter tongue and low range in general. Uh, pedagogical value, more programmatic works, power in the low range. We don't get to play jazz that often, so take advantage. Stop torn, and each movement is so diverse. Sorry, I'm starting to run out of my 40 minutes for free Zoom time, so that's why I'm trying to power through here a little. But uh, you can buy this from directly from Kathy's website as a PDF, 35 bucks for the three movements. Um, or you could listen to it or on Denise Tryon's Denise Tryon Horn's Facebook page, not her personal one, but the Horn one. She has a video of her playing it with the UMKC Wind Ensemble. They went on tour and did this. Uh, it's the entire piece. And then that YouTube video of Adam Unsworth just doing the third movement with piano. Other than that, there are not any recordings out there right now. However, I know that Denise did record it. And that album is supposed to be coming out at any time now. So hopefully sooner than later. And I know she also recorded David Mislanka's Sonata on there. Too. So that'll be a really cool album that'll be coming out. But yeah, so that's, that's the five pieces that are 21st century that you may or may not have heard of any of them. So it's just kind of a fun exposure.